2021 was a busy year for the Excel team at Microsoft as they released a ton of new features. In this video, we're going to take a look at 21 features that were released last year for the Windows, Mac, Web, and mobile versions of Excel. First up is the ability to unhide multiple sheets. So from the unhide menu, you can now select multiple sheets. You can either hold the control key to select multiple items, or you can hold the shift key to select a range of items and then click OK, and that will unhide all of those sheets at one time. Next up is the navigation pane. So from the view tab, you can click the navigation button. That'll open up this pane over here that contains a list of all of the objects in the workbook. And this includes sheets, pivot tables, charts, uh, shapes, and more. And so you can see all of those listed here. Of course, you can just click on these to navigate to any sheet in the workbook. And then you can also select the objects within that sheet by again, just clicking any of these links here. There is a search box at the top that allows you to search. If you were looking for tables or pivot tables, you can search that term and then see all of those objects that have the name of that term throughout the entire workbook. So this is a great tool for navigating large workbooks. Next is a small but welcome feature to the Conditional Formatting Rules Manager window, and that's the ability to resize it. Now, first of all, the, the window is wider by default here, and you can now resize it at the bottom right corner. And this makes it easier to read any long formulas that you have here for rules. Another nice feature is that it remembers the size that you've resized it to, so when you reopen the window, it will be that same size again. Next, we'll take a look at the new Show Changes feature. This feature is accessible on the web version of Excel under the Review tab. You can click the Show Changes button to see the Show Changes tab over here, which shows a list of all the recent changes you or other users have made to your workbook. Now, you can't access this pane on the desktop version of Excel yet. However, you can see the changes that were made from the desktop version of Excel. I have a whole video that explains this feature in more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Next up are the new Lambda helper functions. And this is a set of seven new functions that help make Lambda even more powerful by doing more advanced and complex array processing. This helps you do calculations that weren't previously possible to do in Excel or very, very difficult to achieve without a lot of additional formulas. I'll put a link to this uh, article in the description below as it's helpful in understanding some of these new functions. Next up are the Wolfram data types. And this is a set of rich data types that you can see from the data tab under the data types drop down. We have Wolfram here, and there's all different types of data that you can bring into Excel from the Wolfram databases. And then of course, drill down through the rich data types to retrieve information about that data. So here we have information on Apple. We can click to see the card there with the nutritional facts. And then of course, you can expand that information out and see the actual nutritional data in the separate cells here. And of course, you can do this with all different types of data. My favorite is probably the weather data. Next, we have the visual update to all Office applications, which changed the styling of the ribbon up here to be more in line with Windows 11. One notable feature for this is when you put the quick access toolbar below the ribbon, you now have the option to show the names of the buttons. And this can be helpful if you have a lot of buttons and you don't always remember what the icons mean, you can see the names of the uh, buttons here on the quick access toolbar. Next, we'll take a look at the new accessibility pane and ribbon. So from the review tab, you can click the check accessibility button. Now we'll open up this pane over here that shows all of the accessibility issues that might exist throughout your entire workbook. So this is great if you're sharing your workbooks with anyone with a disability or visual impairment. It will help improve the styling of your workbook as well, as you'll be able to see if there's any hard to read text contrasts, any default sheet names that you forgot to rename, and uh, missing alt text, and all other types of warnings for accessibility. It also opens up this new ribbon at the top here, which just contains buttons that might help you fix some of those issues. The new custom data types APIs give us another way to create rich data types in Excel. In addition to Power BI and Power Query, we can now use a set of APIs to create these rich data types in Excel. This is similar to the Wolfram data types we looked at earlier, but with your own custom data and data sources. My friend Bill Jellin has a great YouTube video that explains the difference between each of these platforms and sources. I'll put a link to that in the description below. 
Up next, we'll look at a small but useful feature for scrolling horizontally. And you can do that by holding the Control and Shift keys and then scrolling down with your mouse wheel. Scrolling down will scroll to the right, scrolling up will scroll back to the left. And of course, this is great when you have really wide sheets with a lot of columns. Smooth scrolling is another welcome feature that eliminates the old snap to grid scrolling behavior. So now when you scroll either horizontally or vertically, you can stop on a tall row or a really wide column and it doesn't snap to the next row or column. I have a separate video that explains this feature in more detail and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Up next, we'll look at full screen mode. Uh, this mode used to exist on Excel, then it disappeared for a while, now it's back and you can access it by clicking this button right here at the right side of the ribbon and go into full screen mode. And that will hide the ribbon and the ribbon tabs and you'll get a lot more real estate for your spreadsheets. You can click the green header bar up here to bring the ribbon back temporarily if you need to click one of these buttons. And then when you click in the sheet, that will uh, the ribbon will disappear again. To bring that back, you can go back to the three dot menu here, just bring this down and then bring uh, this menu down and click always show ribbon. You can also add these buttons to the quick access toolbar by right clicking them. If you use this frequently, you can click uh, full screen mode here, and then again, uh, go back to always showing the ribbon. Another small but handy feature is the ability to search dropdown lists. In this cell here, I have a dropdown list or a data validation list. And now I can just start typing in this cell here, and that will filter down the list for any of the items that contain my search term. I can then use the arrow keys or the mouse to select an item and hit enter to fill it into the cell. Now this feature is only available for the web version of Excel, but hopefully it will be coming to the desktop version in the near future. You can also check out our free list search add-in, which provides very similar functionality for searching data validation lists. Up next, we'll look at the most boring and the most exciting feature all in one. And this is the ability to see the queries pane on the web version of Excel. So if you go to the data tab of the ribbon here, you can, you'll now see this queries button and clicking that will open the queries pane over here. Now, right now you can't do anything with this. There's no Power Query editor available. You can't even refresh the queries yet. You can just see the queries here and click on them and that'll navigate you to the sheet that contains the output table of the query. But this just means that Power Query is coming to the web version of Excel in the future. This is the first step and I'm super excited about the future of this and seeing the full editor in the web version. Another exciting feature on the web version is text to columns. You can go to the data tab on the ribbon, click the text to columns button. That'll open up this window here where of course you can split the column by a delimiter. In this case, Excel's recognized it as a space. We'll hit apply and that will make the change or the transformation. Excel for the web also got some new keyboard shortcuts. Notably ones that are very common that I use often are control down arrow, control up arrow, control end. You can also press uh, page down and page up to scroll up and down the sheet. You can go to the help tab here and then click keyboard shortcuts to see a list of all the keyboard shortcuts and you can also search these here. There's also the alt key shortcuts. So if you press and release the alt key, You'll see the uh, accelerator keys come up here and then if you press H, that'll give us over to the home tab and we can see all of the commands here for the different buttons on the different ribbons. Up next, we'll look at the new Office scripts for the web version of Excel. So on the Automate tab here, you'll see a few buttons to record your actions or write a new script or then run any existing scripts. And this will be similar to writing macros with VBA on the desktop version, but for this, we're using a JavaScript based coding language for the Office scripts. Uh, this is not available on the desktop version yet, so it won't replace VBA probably anytime soon, but it's great to see this new feature for Excel. Microsoft also gave us the ability to add buttons to run our scripts. And you can do that by going to the scripts pane over here, clicking more options and then add a button. And as you can see, I've added this button here. And when I click this button, it'll run my script on this sheet. Next are a few updates for the Mac version of Excel. The first is the name manager. So there's an improved name manager here, which is great, especially once you start using the new Lambda feature. And then there's also a new find all feature for the find window, which is another great addition for Excel for Mac. The Excel mobile app for iPad and Android tablets now has the format painter button. You'll be able to see it right here on the home tab, highly requested feature. Of course, it'll just save you some time when formatting your spreadsheets on a tablet. And finally, if you didn't like any of these features or you have ideas for new ones, Microsoft has a new feedback portal. 
This replaces the old uh, user voice site and there's a new feedback portal here. You can get to that from the help tab in the ribbon within Excel and then click the uh, feedback button. And then this is what the portal looks like here where you can again make suggestions and also upvote other people's ideas so Microsoft knows what you want to see in the product and can work on adding those new features. So that's 21 features that Microsoft released in 2021. I actually had to narrow down this list as there was more than 21 features released, but hopefully these ones are helpful to you and you've learned something new. Of course, if you have any other suggestions for other features that I didn't cover, feel free to leave a comment below and also leave a comment with some of your favorites and we'll do follow up videos on those. I'll also put links to all of the articles for all of these announcements in the description below so you can check out these articles. Notice that all of those articles also have author names there. And a lot of these authors are Microsoft employees and they're very active on social media platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter. So show them some love and gratitude and feel free to reach out to them and let, you know, let them know that you appreciate some of these new features. Thanks again for watching. A happy new year to you. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.